What's up guys, Eden here, and welcome to the second night of Higanbana no Soku Yoromi, also known as the Unforgiving Flowers Blossom in the Dead of Night. Um, as you all know, this is a continuation of the first night of the series that I've been doing. For every time I hit a thousand subscribers, I do an episode or a chapter from the Higanbana series. Now, for those of you who are wondering what's going to happen after I get done with Higanbana, because there's no other nights after this one. It's just the first night and the second night. Um, for those of you who are wondering what I'm going to do, I actually decided that since this has become so popular... I will do a visual novel every time I do, I reach a thousand subs. I will do a chapter from a visual novel and post it up for you guys. Specifically a horror type visual novel. The next one I plan on doing is Umi Neko. And Umi Neko has eight episodes in total. Um, and so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited. I cannot wait to get started on that one. It's going to be long. It's going to be fun. And it has a great story. But in the meantime, we're just going to get started on this one. So yeah, here we go with Higanbana no Sakuyoro ni, the second night. It was a beautiful moon that night. Even the school building at night was colored by the full moon, and its ominous presence could be felt in the air. The full moon has mysterious powers, and it even invigorates yokai. And so, the school yaikai are soothed when the full moon is out. Sometimes they even take a break from stealing brutally murdered souls and hold an elegant event known as the Lunar Festival. Um, 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 um. one more time. Focus your mind. Mm-hmm. There! Yeah! I'm naked again! Marie's lively scream echoes through the old school building. In Mezzo Mezzo san's bathroom, Marie was challenging herself to change into her best outfit. The way yokai change clothes takes a bit of getting used to. After all, yokai are incorporeal beings. Their forms are invisible and their bodies no longer exist. So they can't go out, buy clothes, and simply change into them. Getting back into this outfit should be easy, but... Okay, concentrate. One more time. Usually, yokai outfits depend largely on spirit anchors. In Higanbana's case, her western doll is her anchor and the basis for her attire. And so, for the deceased Marie, her attire is based on the clothes she wore in her final moments. That means she has to use spiritual energy to change her outer appearance into a different outfit than the one she died in. She has to imagine what she wants to look like and gather her spirit. Then, in a burst of energy, there! A puff of smoke appears, and she's nude once again. It's not as though anyone was watching her, but Marie made a racket with her Kia Kias! She went back to her old form and focused her spirit, repeating this over and over. It wasn't something especially difficult to do, but Marie's powers weren't much to begin with. On top of that, since she still hasn't gotten the hang of it, she can't really change when she wants to change. Hmm. Then again, I can't really imagine myself in a beautiful dress. Ah! <sighs> Since Marie didn't really have an interest in fashion, imagining the best western clothes is pretty difficult for her. Tonight is the lunar festival for the school yokai. Only for tonight, even the school yokai that often have conflicts with each other hold truces. It's a harmonious event where they mingle and drink together. For whatever reason, Marie still hasn't met all of the school yokai so she was really looking forward to meeting them today when they are all under the same roof. Okay, let's go! Higambana said suddenly. She said, Hey, Marie! Are you really gonna go out with a shabby outfit like that, I wonder? Yokai like Higambana and Sumire had rather splendid outfits and looked fine, but to put it bluntly, Marie's clothes are plain. That's understandable. She died and became a yokai in that state after all. We'll wait for you, so go ahead and change into some better clothes. Just do as I taught you. You'll be fine. When you get used to it, you'll be able to do it whenever you want. At first, Higanmana waited on her in the hall. But Marie wasn't very good at the basics, so eventually she got impatient and said, Okay, I'm going on ahead. I can't think of any pretty dresses. At this point, anything would be fine, so I have to hurry up and change or... Anyway, anything is good. Anything. I might want a pretty dress, but it's obvious that it wouldn't suit me. What should I change into? 
What should I change into? I have no idea. Even if it's not a pretty dress, I wonder what would be best to wear today at the Lunar Festival. I haven't worn a kimono before, so I can't imagine myself in one. Oh yeah, now that I think of it, since they let me become the last school yokai, this is the first time I'll be greeting them face to face. Even though I had been thinking of eating sweet dumplings while gazing at the lovely moon, that's not what really matters. I'm the new school yokai and they are my seniors. I've got to be careful not to make any mistakes. I can't wear festive clothes. I can't wear clothes that aren't neat. I need something neat, appropriate, serious. Hmm. 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 Poof. When Marie finally succeeded in changing clothes, the Lunar Festival had already been going on for more than an hour. Marie rushes out of the bathroom and runs up the stairs. The meeting place is the roof. The old school building's roof is where the full moon shines the brightest. I'm sorry for being late! She springs out onto the roof. There, a strange scene was unfolding. Even though normally a roof empty of anything but cracked concrete and inorganic matter should have spread before her, vividly beautiful sakura from the underworld were in full bloom and covering a huge tree. That sea of white flower petals gave off a faint glow and they were magically beautiful. Beneath the illusionary fully bloomed sakura, the yokai were sitting in a circle and indulging themselves with glasses of sake. It has its majesty, but it's not too extravagant. They were having a banquet, but they're not too noisy. Those yokai who had no qualms about stealing people's lives away left that behind just for tonight. This was a time for modesty. It seemed everyone was slightly intoxicated and engrossed in each other's conversations, so they hadn't noticed Marie's entrance. You're late, Marie! And what's with the getup? I'm sorry! No matter how much I tried, nothing worked! Please, just let me go like this. The outfit that Marie had finally succeeded in conjuring up after trying for over an hour looked just like a middle school or high school uniform. Udyu! Wonderful, Marie! You almost look like you're in high school. That outfit, it looks just like a uniform from an expensive private school. What? Y you're the school nurse, right? Why are you here? Hey, hey, don't say such rash things. Isn't it alright if I mingle a bit? I love sake and gazing at the moon after all. Oh, I get it. That's the uniform your sister went to school in, am I right? Higamana says as she reads Marie's mind. 
Hearing that, Marie at least at last realized why she ended up in those clothes. Her clothes were based on the local prefectural high school's uniform, although it might have some minor differences. That outfit was something her sister had worn, and at some point Marie had wanted it and dreamed of wearing it. I couldn't really think of a pretty dress, and after deciding I had to wear something more cordial, it turned out like this. You're wrong. You picked out those clothes because you wanted to wear them. Looks like it. Marie must have really wanted to wear that outfit. These clothes, I... Well, since you're dead now, you can't really have your dream of being a high schooler granted, can you? <laughs> but isn't it nice being able to wear that outfit you've dreamed of, that is? <laughs> you think it's strange, don't you? It's not strange. Being able to wear the clothes you've always wanted on this night when we can admire the moon? It's lovely, isn't it? Saying that, Higamana quickly turned to show Marie. She's not her usual self, and she's wearing a more elegant dress. That special outfit showed that tonight was a special occasion. Higanbana! Marie! You're so pretty! Your clothes look so lovely! Uryu! Th th thank you. Come along now, Marie. After all, you're the lowest seat and already so late. If they object to you rushing in three times, why don't you pour everyone their drinks? I'll do it with you. It's your first time greeting all these numerous colleagues. She had already introduced herself once to the yokai class, class 13, but all she really did was introduce herself to an empty classroom. Yokai won't let their guard down so simply. As a result, they do not show themselves easily. That's why this would be her first chance to directly meet all eight members of the school yokai. It made her a bit nervous, but for that moment, as she too was a member of the school yokai, she had to toughen up and greet them. Even Marie, who was unfamiliar with the rules of the banquet, could guess that at an event like this, she would need to address the senior members. Marie let Higambana lead her to the first seat of the school yokai, the school's headmaster. The headmaster was the head of all the school yokai. He had the power to completely erase the fact that one exists or even had ever existed. He was the greatest, strongest, and most important yokai around. And along with the headmaster, tipping back cups of wine, was the school nurse. Oh my, welcome! Anyway, isn't the moon lovely tonight? We <laughs> Really now, you've had a bit too much to drink. Are you sure you're the only one drinking, or is your alcohol drinking you? It's fine, now hurry up and drink! Ugh. You're the head of the school yokai, aren't you? You're the leader, right? Introduce me to a nice guy or something. Hey! Don't take me lightly! The hell do you mean, give up on that dream? Don't give me those excuses about how after a certain age you can jilt a girl. Go! Hey, you! Give me a good man! I don't even care if it's a human or not anymore. I don't want it to be too late for me to marry! <laughs> Laughing, bellowing, and crying, it was awfully rambunctious. She wept openly, burying her face into the cross-legged headmaster's grand belly. Indeed, there was no better drinking partner than the headmaster for a drunkard like her. Nevertheless, why was a teacher who was supposedly human here at the yokai's banquet? When humans are dead drunk, their wavelengths draw close to the non-human world. Well, you can see for yourself what happens. She probably won't remember anything come tomorrow morning, so we don't need to worry. She's been rambling on and on about her broken heart until just a little while ago. So everyone else has had a big helping, too. <laughs> well, I don't quite understand, but it looks like they're having fun, so I decided to let them be. Anyway, Marie, go greet the headmaster. Even though he's a decrepit old fool, at one time he was our leader. Ho ho ho, so now we say I was only the leader at one time? I I'm sorry I was late today. I'm always in your debt. I am Mezzo Mezzo Marie. I wonder, how do you find living with yokai? Is it fun? Well, I'm not sure if it's fun or not yet, but it seems very interesting. <laughs> Silly Marie, you know that even though she hasn't been hunting at all lately, she's been doing nothing but getting in the way of other people's hunts? Ho 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 ho, you're free to hunt or not to hunt. You're also free to get in the way of others hunting. 
It is an unwritten law of the school yokai that we shall be bound by nothing. Even if you think about becoming a yokai, it's not easy to do so. The fact that you were able to make a name for yourself among the school yokai must be some form of destiny. It must have been amusing to trifle with fate so thoroughly. I knew I would try to become a yokai, but becoming one isn't something that can happen at a moment's notice. The fact that I was able to become one was sort of an unexpected accident. This is an extremely fortunate, brand new life after death. But after death means after death. I had already died and now cannot take anything back. That's my reason. At the very least, in this yokai body I now possess, I want to try to become the person I always wanted to be. Oh, now you're starting to say such dignified things. Next time you get in the way of my hunt, I'll tear you apart relentlessly, limb from limb, okay? I only do it because you only try to make prey of such unfortunate people. Ho 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 ho. For some reason, someone like Higan Banakun, who starts something new the second you take your eyes off of her, Marie Kun seems like a great replacement. Marie Kun? Take care of Higan Banakun. Dolls are dolls, after all. Their greatest pleasure is for someone to play with them. How rude! Even though I'm the one playing with Marie! <laughs> yes, Headmaster. Yeah, yeah. Mezzo Mezzo sans that ghost story about the girls' bathroom in the old school building, right? Huh? Yes, that's right, but... The school nurse, who I had thought was completely drunk and useless, was now looking up at the moon and murmuring. A long time ago, back when there was no new school building or anything, this wasn't the former school building, but an elegant institution. There were so many students, and of course, there were the seven school mysteries. You're right. How nostalgic. But everything disappeared. Ghost stories are born from places where people are. If the people go away, then the ghost stories vanish too. Once, even in this old school building, there were those seven splendid school mysteries and the yokai that governed them. But now, nobody is left. Out of the current student body, I doubt there's anyone who knows about the former school's seven mysteries. Once, long before there was anything like the new school building. School only took place in this building. That was why this old building was overflowing with students, and amongst those students, naturally, those seven school mysteries should have come about. However, out of the current students attending the new school, not a single student knew of them. With the exception of Mezzo Mezzo san all of these ghost stories take place within either the new school building or the area around it. Even though the former school building is feared as some ghastly place, at one point there was a school community and within it were students who knew of the seven mysteries. But now they are only remembered in the graduation albums coated in dust and the graduates of long ago. I wonder what happens to this yokai of those forgotten ghost stories. They die. No, I should say they disappear. You might say that the time we're remembered for is the same as a lifespan for us school yokai. That we have transcended death cannot escape a form such as that is quite interesting. <laughs> you are the first yokai in so long to settle into that old school building where all those yokai died out. That's why I think that the lonely and abandoned old school building must surely be welcoming the company of the guest after so long. Hmm. There is nobody in the abandoned school building anymore. Occasionally, a teacher may come by to take something from storage to bring to their classroom and such. Other times, students sneak in to test their courage by exploring it. But that's all. Long ago was the hustle and bustle of school in this lonely place. I wonder if the old school building would welcome the new yokai, Mezzo Mezzo san, who settled within it. Well, at best, it is a terrifying ghost tale none shall forget. It's because it is a terror. It is terrifying that it is called a ghost story. It is because the night is dyed thick with darkness that the day may sparkle with light. Ho 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 ho. No matter how feared yokai or ghost stories are, if those who call on them die down, and nobody passes them down, they will vanish. That is precisely why they wish that humans do not forget about them, so they can live on. Contemplating the thought of that humans and yokai are alike. Marie considered that maybe they were all essentially just lonely. 
She finished greeting the headmaster and went over to the next yokai. Next was the second ranked. Uh, the black tea gentleman, right? Suddenly, with a huge clatter, a bottle struck the floor. When she looked, Marie saw a huge man wearing a black mantle sitting cross-legged and scowling at her. <laughs> it's nothing to worry so much about, is it, Nami-san? Hey, Mezzo Mezzo Marie! Get your ass over here! The huge man seemed excessively displeased. Marie instantly realized her slip-up. That's right. The black tea gentleman was only the shadow of the second ranked, which meant that the real second ranked should exist too. <laughs> but Izanami, it's your fault, you know! I must agree. If you did not want for her to be mistaken, you simply should have shown yourself to her before. <laughs> Shut your trap! I've been busy hunting and all. I got that squinty-eyed son of a bitch stealing people's prey, you know. Stealing is such an upsetting way to put it. All that I do is simply show a lovely dream to the boys and girls who have been bothered and beaten down by their harsh realities. You dumbass! The hell are you talking about dreams and all? Dreams. They're the kind of shit you grab onto with your own damn hands, just like this! That is all well and good for strong-willed and resolute children. But don't you think frail children require salvation as well? <laughs> the hell are you talking all high and mighty for? School! It's a wasteland! A goddamn jungle! There ain't no place where any sad, sorry piece of shit who can't even walk on their own can just wander on through. What I'm doing is teaching the little bastards. You're just spewing horse shit. You think those little punks have a place in your dreams? They've got a long ass way to go. <laughs> You're the same as always. It has been a while, Marie-san. Yes, it certainly has, Black Tea Gentleman. In order to live, don't you think it is important to dream occasionally? If a person could not even dream, is there any reason for their life? I wonder just how many prey you've gobbled up with sweet talk like that. <laughs> dreams are important too, but I think that dreams should only be seen as dreams. One shouldn't live in their dreams. Well said. Hey, tea bastard. Maybe you should clean out your ears and listen to Marie. Marie, you've changed a lot since you died, haven't you? You've got some balls. I like you. I'm Izanami. I'm the second ranked of the school yokai. The reaper of the 13th step. That's me. Every school has their own ghost stories about the 13th floor. That was Izanami's realm. Izanami is a terrifying yokai, you know? He chases down pitiful prey that step on the 13th step of a flight of stairs wherever they go, and he drops them into a terrifying hell. Ah, it's probably because of your hunting. Marie was prompted to shake hands, and on holding hers out, was grasped by a beefy hand with such force it was painful. Uh, hi, I'm Mezzo Mezzo Marie. Pleased to meet you. Oh, we're all monsters here. Let's do our best to push those brats down to the depths of hell. Marie laughed vaguely as if to say, um, <laughs> I'll do my best, I guess. Next to the second ranked was the third ranked. That was Higambana. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, pleased to meet you too. The two greeted one another with feigned ignorance. Next was the fourth in rank. This one she hadn't met before. It was her first time meeting this one. The guide from earlier, Sumire, was standing, drinking rice wine with the others in the same kimono-clad appearance. Oh, if it isn't Marie! You're still wearing those queer clothes. They don't suit you at all. No, that's not the case at all. I think they suit her really well. Please, this way. Marie-san. I'll do the introductions. This is Azami, fourth ranked in the school yokai society. I'm Azami. Pleased to make your acquaintance. That's my sister. I love my strong, smart, and heartwarming, brutal yokai of a sister. Even yokai have sisters, then. Azami, the fourth ranked, had Sumire, the seventh ranked, as a sister. In all the school yokai, they were the only sisters. Sometimes... Well, it's not as if we're ever someone's children. 
family ties, having them and not having them, it's all equally meaningless. I'm different from you, you loathsome and bitter creature. My sister and I are very close indeed. <laughs> I think this child has had too much to drink. In the world of yokai, family ties come and go. So the relationship between these two seemed quite lovely. Marie didn't overlook Higanbana, who was watching the situation, displeased, with her mouth turned into a sad frown. It must get lonely being a yokai. So what? Therefore, even though I might not have family, I still think I can make friends. Oh, is that so? Well, you're my friend, aren't you? That's why I really don't think that Higanbana-san has to be alone. Stop, please. Just stop reading my mind. The yokai, rich in magic power, had the ability to read each other's minds. However, Marie didn't have that power. But Marie understood, only because she was Higanbana's friend. Higanbana pretends to look somewhere else. <laughs> Becoming friends with Higanbana. There are some things in the world I don't understand. However you do it, please keep getting along with her. This Azami, somehow she seemed like a good person. She was a monster that feasted on souls, so she wasn't a gentle person. However, she didn't seem that unreasonable in character. I see, I see. Keep thinking of her as a good person. However, this good person play is also one of my sister's greatest weapons. You could say she's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Ow, 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 <laughs> Subare says some strange things from time to time. <laughs> While being pinched everywhere, Sumire was jumping up and down with tears in her eyes. Yes, yes, since Azumi and Sumire are siblings, I wonder if the two of you use bullying when hunting together. The school is full of bullying, so you wouldn't miss any meals. The 5th and 6th ranks still remained. Both of them seemed to be drinking rice wine with Sakunoshin. Uryu! Marie! Have you greeted everyone? Yes, I think I want to greet everyone here also. Sakunoshin isn't one of the 8 seated school monsters, but he's a great yokai that rolls animal spirits. Uryu! That's why I'm still called as such! Yes, Marie! I'll do the introduction, shall I? This child is the 6th ranked. Oh. They fell asleep. Uryu. A child who looked younger than Marie was curled up like a cat sleeping peacefully. That child is the sixth ranked, Renoir of the art room. Renoir is a quiet kid, doesn't hunt very much. Not having hunted in a while, Ren's magical power was withered almost entirely. Renoir was originally a Sukumogami. You know, like a spirit that inhabits objects making them come alive on their hundredth birthday. Despite just sleeping, Renoir's current powers are nothing to laugh at. Sumire, the seventh rank, spread bullying and performed extremely proactive hunting. Nevertheless, even without hunting much, this yokai Renoir was higher ranked. Since that's the case, Renoir must have held a great amount of power in the past, befitting of one's rank. Well then, you're the fifth ranked? I'm Kyo of the Mirror, the fifth ranked. I'm the keeper of the boundary to the mirror world. Kyokun is the same as me, an animal spirit. So we're friends, Uryu! I am no friend of an herbivorous lion the likes of you. I am an ukami, a wolf, a hyena. I drag out the wicked faces of those foolish humans and reflect through the mirror, hunt, and kill them. I am the coolest of cool hunters. His eyes glinted sharply as he spoke, and he gulped down his sake. That is to say, he seemed to hold a unique aura about him. I suppose this ends all the introductions. Marie, let's drink, let's drink! Yes, it's a moon viewing party, so if you don't drink a lot by the end, it's a waste. But I'm not an adult. I've never drunk sake before. Fool, you're not even human anymore. Not only that, this isn't for the sake of the human world. Huh? This isn't sake? The red fluid filled glass the brim and at first glance appeared to be sake, but when the flower petals fell gently and the moon rose to the surface, it looked to me like a work of art. And when I brought my face closer, the airy, sweet fragrance of fruit passed into my nose. Never mind that, I can't, I can't! Sake is for adults! Like I said, it's not sake. You know, 
This is made by squeezing candid cherry blossoms of the underworld into the hollow of a cherry blossom tree. We squeeze it out, so that's why we call it juice. Uh, what? It's juice? <laughs> In that case, I can drink it. There you go. Get drinking and drain a glass for each full moon. Well, excuse me. Udyu! <laughs> that's great! Marie, you're drinking so heartily. Gah! Wait, this... Is this really juice? My eyes are spinning. Ah! Yes, indeed, it's really juice. But it's yokai juice, though. <laughs> hey, hey, are you okay? She's completely collapsed. But it was delicious, don't you agree? Yeah. My eyes are spinning, but it's delicious. Even though the world is spinning in circles, it fills with a very, very strange yet pleasant feeling. The world was dyed in the color of cherry blossoms, and in the storm of petals I felt the blessing of the flowers of the cherry blossom tree growing on the roof as they opened one after another. That which Marie had put in her mouth was different from the rice wine drunk by human beings. However, when Marie, who lacked sufficient magical power, put that into her mouth, she showed symptoms similar to those of drunk human beings. This old school building has an abundance of yokai energy. That energy is old, lays dormant, and the new school building can't compare to the depth of its power. And the drops produced from the underworld-born sakura that grow here are particularly sublime. A taste that is out of this world. If you can taste its deliciousness, then you could say that is the old school building's way of welcoming you. I feel like I heard that earlier from the school nurse. The old school building is now forgotten. If I settled in that old school building, Surely they'd be happy, she said. That's why the old school building invited you. And the droplets of the greatest cherry blossom surely wanted to bloom inside of you. And that taste was really exquisite, truly, out of this world. A warm comfort gradually gently spread through the whole of Marie's body. A comfort as if to make her gently drift into sleep among the fallen cherry blossom petals. That taste was, since she had been born, and of course, since she had died, the greatest pleasure. I can't hear Higanbana's voice anymore. Everything was falling gently, gently. And then, I was enveloped tenderly somehow. That's right. The old school building was always lonely. What's more, I was the first born here in ages. It was happy. So, not only do I have to greet all the yokai here, but also the school building itself. Hello there, school building son. My name is Mezzo Mezzo Marie. Nice to meet you. Whatever happens in the future, I look forward to it. A comfort just like that of lying in bed on Sunday morning. I want to sleep like this forever. Ah, but Higambana-san is always calling me. When I don't answer, she pouts. Mumble, mumble. Marie? How about you wake up like a good girl? Even yokai can catch colds, you know. Uh, Higambana-san? Huh? Before she knew it, dusk was turning to dawn. The flowers of the underworld disappeared, as did the shadows and form of the banquet. Although I had only just met everyone, I fell asleep and the party ended a while ago. What's more, why are you sleeping in a place like this? Why? Higambana-san, you and the others made me drink, and I felt really good. What are you talking about? Higambana asked, are you still half asleep? And hit Marie's head like one would a malfunctioning radio. Marie, you said you wanted to participate and wear an absolutely fabulous outfit. I waited forever for you. Ah, uh, yes, and because of that, I was really late to join in. What are you talking about? In the end, you didn't come at all. My story didn't match Higanbana's. Likewise, Higanbana-san, what are you talking about? Didn't I come here and greet everyone? By coming here? Here? You mean the roof of this old school building? Yeah, it was on the roof of the old school building, wasn't it? 
What are you talking about? We decided upon the roof of the new school building. Wait, it couldn't be... You confused the locations and waited here all by yourself? W b but You know, even with a late arrival, I don't think mistaking a place is considered normal if you see that there's nobody there. And you just waited here the whole time? Man, Marie, how stupid can you get? Higamana, while chastising Marie, just shrugged her shoulders. But Marie still didn't understand. Surely that couldn't be. Surely she had taken part in a banquet with all the others here. Since it made no sense, Marie could only pinch her own cheeks hoping this was some after effect from drinking too much. And in the end, we even made some delicious sakura sake from the lovely underworld sakura that grew there. I had so wanted to let you taste the flavor that no human could ever enjoy. Ah, <sighs> Yes, I tasted it. It was really delicious. There's no way you could have drunk it though. After all, you didn't come. I guess I might have been half asleep. Surely last night I was here amongst the lush cherry blossoms from the underworld. And I had it. The Sakura wine. Cherry trees from the underworld? On the roof of the old school building? Yes. It was a fantastic, beautiful sight, wasn't it? Even if last night's banquet was but an illusion, the beauty of the fervently blooming cherry blossoms on that roof surely couldn't be one. Marie? Certainly, long ago, I've heard the Sakura of the Underworld bloomed here as well. But that was long ago, back when children came here. Now it has declined and there are no nutrients for the Sakura of the Underworld to bloom with here. But, but they blossomed here! They were a really beautiful and fantastic sight! Hmm, is that true? If you say so, considering how rare that'd be, it's undoubtedly a miracle. And... As for the sake from the Sakura of the Underworld, did you drink it? Yes, it was very sweet in scent and taste, very delicious. Huh. What on earth, Marie? Perhaps you're just very lucky, hmm? What do you mean? That rice wine with its magical power was laid to rest long ago so it could become even more powerful. That's why, if this old school building had miraculously produced the Sakura of the Underworld, if it had produced the Sakura wine, then it must have tasted like something unimaginable and uncomparable to anything in this world. Yes, last night Marie was told such a thing indeed. If that's so, then I'm jealous! The underworld Sakura of the new school building is still fairly young. You could say it's tasty as tasty comes, but it's nothing compared to what you tasted. Meeting on the greatest night for viewing the full moon? And tasting the finest Sakura wine from the old school building underworld Sakura that shouldn't even exist? Marie, you are truly fortunate. Marie had not the slightest idea of what was happening, but she knew last night's moon viewing party definitely wasn't a dream or an illusion. The cherry blossom petals gently stuck to her collar, said as much. Marie again told Higampana about last night. Hmm, it's really quite mysterious, isn't it? Even for a yokai such as myself, I'm at a loss about what happened last night. It wasn't particularly great moon viewing. You... you seem like a good person. I wonder if you weren't in fact called by the old school building. Maybe. I guess that might be the case. Thank you, old school building-san. In the beautiful night of the moon, let's come together again someday. Whatever happens, thank you, and treat me well. <laughs> 